After 500 videos and just hitting 3,000 subscribers, thank you, by the way, I'm here to share with you how I actually got here, what worked for me, what hasn't, and how you can avoid giving up on your journey because it's not easy after you. Let's get My name is Cole Connor and I was put here to do three things. Create, inspire, love. Thanks for being here. Let's get into it. Before we jump into the meat of the video, let me tell you who I am so you can know where I'm coming from and how maybe that influences some of what I'm going to say. I'm creative by nature. I've been making videos since I was 15 and music since I was 17. So YouTube really comes natural to me and I love it. Specifically, I am a long form creator. I don't really focus on short form content. Not that I never have, but I don't focus on it. I've made over 500 videos that are have been on this channel specifically, and I've probably made hundreds of other ones on different channels over the years and before I even had a YouTube channel. You can see in my description uh, at the very bottom, I've put uh, milestones that I've reached. Pretty much every time I upload a video, I put the subscriber count. Recently, I passed 3,000 subscribers. This is something a couple years ago that I would I was just like dreaming of. How do people get 2,000? How do people get 1,000, 3,000? I didn't know and it was extremely overwhelming and extremely frustrating working so hard, putting so much energy and effort into something that just wasn't really paying off. I kept going and I didn't give up and I hope that what I'm about to say will inspire you to keep going too. So what has worked for me? Trying different things that are of interest to me and kind of settling down into um, a couple of niches. I hate the idea of niching. I literally have hats and merch that say no niche because I hate the concept. But ultimately, we are only interested in so many things. Like for example, I'm not out there making uh, like football content. Even though I love football, I'm not out there making content about it. So what came to me was making content about helping entrepreneurs, helping photographers make money, showing them how I'm doing it ultimately. Making these videos about my own, my own entrepreneurial journey and how I'm making money, et cetera, kind of gave me the space to also have a creative lane on my YouTube channel. Uh, for example, I can make a real estate photography video about the basics. Then the next video, maybe I wanna talk about uh, how it feels to get older. So I'm kind of going back and forth between the ones I'm feeling super passionate about and then my bread and butter, which is kind of the teaching content. If you have something that's providing value, I do believe and I've kind of seen through my channel that people eventually start to just care about you um, and they care about what you have to say about a specific subject, etc. And that is a really beautiful thing uh, when you're making content. People begin to care about your journey. Things that I've tried, and I'm looking at a list here, vlogs, talking videos, teaching, story times, uh, more cinematic, short films, pranks, reactions, music videos. I've tried them almost all. Um, I didn't actually, I, sorry, I don't know why I put pranks. I didn't actually try pranks. But I found that I don't love doing every type. For example, reactions, they are fun and I have had some work really well and get a lot of views, but there's just something so shallow about it. And I, I, I knew that I wouldn't want to keep that up over a long period of time. And I might still do some in the future, especially if it's something I really care about, but it's not like I didn't want to be a reaction channel. What I really fell for was teaching. I tried vlogging and I really enjoy vlogging actually, but I wasn't doing it the right way, so I've, I kind of decided to take a break before I go back and attempt it in a different way. Story times can be fun, cinematic things can be fun, music videos are fun, but really what's worked for me is these giving value teaching videos balanced with more passionate projects or passionate talking subjects. It keeps me in line to ask, what do I want to be known for? If any of these videos blow up, am I okay with being like that guy? And would I want to keep making that type of content? There are plenty of videos that I made that I wouldn't want to keep making that type of content all the time. Um, and that's kind of why I love YouTube is because you don't have to stick to one thing, but if you do blow up on something you're not really passionate about, I'm not going to say it's pointless, but it um, kind of defeats the purpose of gaining fans uh, because if you do blow up off a of reaction, and you don't want to do reactions anymore, are they really going to still react to your content? Just a thought. There are plenty of times where I just don't feel like, where I make a video and then I sit down to edit it and I just don't feel good about it, so I scrap it. It's a thing. So I think you should do two things. Try a bunch of different things, then see if anything starts to work, and then ask yourself, can you continue to make those types of videos? And if you can't, then maybe don't like 
invest so much into it. What helps me and what I've landed on is wanting to talk about my money journey, how I'm making money, how I'm surviving as a creative. That's where the creative survival guide comes in. That gives me an opportunity to teach people through my videos, but also sell things, whether it's presets or courses or have people just hire me because they see that I'm good at what I do and they want me to be a part of whatever they're doing. And then I also talk about videos on life, whether it's talking or short film, saving room for more creative projects like music videos. I'm still, I still experiment because I'm constantly changing, but, and my interests do too. So I'm not saying quit experimenting. I'm mainly saying you got to try different things to figure out what you're really called to do on YouTube. You probably heard this a million times, but researching topics on things like vidIQ, you could probably even use ChatGPT. I currently use TubeBuddy. Yeah, so I use TubeBuddy. Like you go to Keyword Explorer, YouTube, um, how to grow on YouTube. Let's say I want to make a video on that, which is what kind of this video is. Um, how to actually grow on YouTube. Finding keywords, finding things that people are searching for. Um, seems like a lot of people are looking at this. Seems like this isn't the be these aren't the best keywords to use if I was making this video. Um, it shows you a score analysis, search volume, how many people are searching. Shows you the search results um, sees it to see if you own any of it. Now type in real estate photography editing, results are good. I own actually one of these 19, boom, there's one of my top videos there. So that's how it works, it's fairly simple, but let's say I wanted to use this, then I would, and it's good enough for me, even though I would probably try to make it a little better of a keyword, like probably, um, let's say luxury real estate photo editing. Boom, excellent, that's really what you want. Then you go boom, you go uh, optimize an SEO studio, then it helps you pretty much maintain a high SEO score. You wanna incorporate all of these words into your title. So I would go like um, luxury real estate photography, photography editing in Lightroom. All you need to know maybe. And then you would go in here and you wanna make sure your first sentence is like today I talk about luxury real estate editing in in Lightroom and then you kind of want to use some of them throughout a sentence or two um, it's vital for luxury real estate to have great I mean I'm just totally spit photography editing so let's get it right something super simple boom and then see how that went up to 95 percent and then you go next you can go ahead and include some tags it gives you some selective tags if you want to buddy you can check out my affiliate link in the description um, it's fairly cheap and yeah it helps support the channel if you want to uh, use it through that it also you can go to the thumbnail section it kind of shows you what other people are doing um, and you can upload your thumbnail to see how it looks compared to theirs. Then, of course, if you already have a drafted video uploaded, you can apply it directly to that video, and all these things will pop up uh, in the YouTube description. So it's pretty nice. I use that on every single video. Now I've started to also incorporate ChatGPT. I use it in a multitude of different ways, but what I am currently doing that's really helpful is if I find a video that I really think I should make a video on, I will literally put the video topic and say, tell me about this in chat GPT. And then sometimes it really gives me great um, things to bounce off of that, that maybe I wasn't even thinking about. Like I might have five things I wanna talk about with the luxury real estate photography editing. And then it brings up three other things I didn't even think about. And I'm like, holy shit, that makes my video so much better. For example, this is a great example. I literally paste, copy and pasted uh, my whole script that I have for this video into chat GPT and I said, what's a good hook for this as a YouTuber? And the hook that I used in the beginning that hopefully got you to continue watching was after 500 videos and just hitting 3000 subscribers, I added a couple words here and there to kind of make it my own, but this is what it showed me. That's a great way to use chat G GPT to help. I organize all of my ideas in Notion. Uh, I'm just gonna go show you this here really quickly. I have a... Um, a board of sorts called content. Um, if you're interested in me making something like this that you would want to use, just let me know. I have, let's just go here. I have, I have all of my videos um, in a, I have all of my video ideas broken down into like a, 
a calendar kind of. Um, I have content, videos on cue, videos legit on cue, and videos I'm actually filming next. When I'm finished, I post them in the posted section so you can see all the videos I posted um, are here. Sometimes I do more than others as far as like add thumbnails, etc. But most of these uh, in Notion include my script, include what I'm what I'm talking about in the video, and it just helps me stay organized. I highly recommend having a place where you're writing down all of your ideas, you're scripting, you're trying to figure out what videos are coming out next, you're moving things around, because some weeks you're not inspired by some ideas and some weeks you are. So it's really helpful for me to have this Notion calendar. I highly recommend. It's very important to experiment with different types of thumbnails. Um, I'm not trying to pretend like I am the thumbnail editor expert at all but I have experimented with a couple different kinds you can obviously hire someone on Fiverr I haven't really gotten to that point with where that's what I'm doing mainly because I like the process of taking photos and trying to have more cinematic thumbnails personally for example like these are all just simple teaching videos or story times where I I'm just using a little bit of creativity to make the thumbnail but like this one was a, a trailer I made, which I really just, I love the thumbnail. Because I'm taking more cinematic shots, I'm kind of using those as a thumbnail and it, I find it really awesome. Same with this one here. Um, this one here, I had to take a separate image. This one here, I try to get creative with my income report thumbnails and do something associated with money. So I kind of have fun with it, but uh, some of them, especially they look more than maybe like this one here. Um, that's just you can hire someone on Fiverr, but this feels more YouTubey versus this feels more like cinematic. Um, but try different things, see what works with you. If you're not, if you don't have any sort of branding and colors and things associated with your brand, I highly recommend doing that. Um, I'm, I'm going to be rebranding soon, but as you can see, mine is very orange and green right now. Giving value has probably been the biggest thing I've done giving away free things associated with your niche. So if we go to my videos and we go to the most popular, um, the two most popular videos I have are how to merge bracketed HDR photos, which is just like a super simple teaching video, and then how to e edit luxury HDR, which is just how I learned to edit real estate photos, especially interior design. And this one, I give away a free preset. This free preset adds people to my email list and um, my email list is up over 3,000 right now. Not everyone stays on the list. I probably have had 6,000, I mean, a ridiculous amount of people download it, but right now it, it's at 3,000. So giving away something free, not only you're giving away something free, so that's helpful to people, that gives value, that makes them want to subscribe to see what else you're coming up with. And then they, if you have it set up properly and you have a funnel, then that adds them to your email list, which therefore you can send out new videos to them in the future. Ultimately, giving value away for free is going to come back and help you 10 times that's that's my advice yeah i do sell presets now too i have made money selling them but giving them away as well for the people who just want the free version it's it's huge constantly upping my storytelling skills so if i was just making teaching videos maybe this wouldn't be a big deal i would just be upping my equipment my lighting my background uh, my maybe my outfits my style um, or my editing but what I've started to do is not only am I upping that, but I'm upping my storytelling videos that are more cinematic. The one I put out called Fuck Your Algorithms, which you can check out here. I was just so proud of that one. Um, also, the one I fell in love at first sight, super proud of that one. I'm getting more cinematic and I'm just upping my game. So people, if you're constantly upping your game, I think people are kind of growing with you. And so you're kind of always can be that person that's inspiring. Leveraging social media and emails, every video I send out to my email list, every video I transcribe using chat GPT and I create a blog post out of it. Now my website gets over 600 views a month um, from people just going to my website based on the SEO that has been created from this transcribed YouTube video. And, and not only are they checking out the blog post they're finding, but they're checking out other um, other web pages on my website, which is pretty cool. I also do use YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, TikTok. I pretty much create two to four 
short videos from any long video that I post. I never know what's going to do well in the short. Sometimes TikTok has 3,000, sometimes Instagram has 3,000, sometimes YouTube has 3,000, sometimes they all get 200. Usually one or two of the videos does well on one or two of the platforms. It, I just don't know when, I don't know how. Um, I try to understand it. It's, it escapes me. I don't know. But I do link the YouTube shorts to the actual long video and sometimes that helps and sometimes I make money from YouTube shorts and get subscribers. So I recommend doing that as well. Collaborating has worked for me. I have collaborated on different types of videos, um, whether they're just smaller like I did um, that one I was just looking at. I collaborated with this burger coaster video um, podcast. I collaborated with that. Um, I've done other like adventure type videos that are kind of collaborating, collaborating here in a funny video, uh, podcast collaborating helps because you're kind of pulling in the other person's audience. Sometimes it can be really overwhelming and it's a lot to schedule with different people. So I'm not always doing it. I'm kind of taking a break from it at this point. So I could definitely do better with collaborating and I hope to do that more in the future. It can be helpful. I highly recommend when you're making a YouTube video to do something that kind of relates to how you make money or work. Uh, because having a stable source of income is very helpful to growing, uh, especially if you have like some sort of part-time or full-time job that gives you the opportunity to have extra time to work on videos. I find that it takes a long time to script videos, to come up with ideas, to film, to edit. So you need some of that extra time, but you also need the stability of being like comfortable and having free brain space to think about making videos. Because when you're just super broke and if you have a family and you're super broke or alone and super broke and you're just sitting here making YouTube videos and uh, barely scraping by it's not a good feeling it doesn't it doesn't uh, garden what's the word it doesn't water inspiration to keep going so I recommend if you're gonna be making YouTube videos kind of some way related to what you have to do for work if that's an option for you if it's not I understand but even if it's just part of your daily life trying to get to where you want to be it can be incorporated and probably help you in whatever venture you're going on. For me, it's been very helpful. It grows my business as my YouTube grows. So that's what I recommend. Having the YouTube channel pretty much just builds trust with my potential clients and clients. So it works. Last thing, keep going. Don't give up. If you need a break, take it. I've taken so many breaks. I mean, the bottom line is you have to be consistent, but if you're consistent for a while and you need a break, take a break because experiencing major burnout is not worth it and it's not fun and it can make you not even want to make youtube videos at all anymore so i just highly recommend if you need a break to take it um but when you're feeling on fire i recommend going as hard as you can to don't don't burn out but go as hard as you can whether it's one video a week one video two weeks one video a month just try to stay as consistent as you can and i'm not the the preacher the god on freaking staying consistent as possible. Usually what I do is I get a ton of ideas, I make a ton of videos, and I'm like, oh, I need a break. Then take a break. So it's worked for me. What hasn't worked for me? A bunch of shit. Everything has been trial and error, honestly. So I, I really don't think there's a huge point in talking about what hasn't worked. There's been a lot of things that haven't worked over the years, but trying new things, staying consistent, not giving up, growing, in my skill level has made the growth actually happen. What do I wanna do next? So for me, trying to take this from 3,000 to 10,000, 20,000, 40, 50, 60, 100 is a couple things. Building community. I have been not the best at building community, I don't think. I do have a Discord. I have I've made attempts and lots of failing attempts at trying to keep up with things like that. But I think at this point, at this low level, of being around 3,000, I do have people that are interested in things like that, but it's not enough for me to divert a bunch of time. So I'm trying to slowly divert more time that way. Diverge, divert, divert, divert more time that way. Which is pretty much just getting to know your subscribers more, getting to know the people that care about you more and um, building something fun. And I mean, I already have a hard time talking to a lot of different people, friends, etc. I'm not super active on like Instagram, even especially at this moment. So it's hard to keep up with people. So it would be nice to have some sort of smaller group of people who really get each other. So I'm hoping to build that at some point and challenge me to be more social and active. And, um, you know, we all want friends and we all want community. But I think as life goes on, we kind of push things like that away based on bullying or uh, getting let down or getting hurt. So, I, yeah, community is important. 
finding ways to provide more value is something I'm trying to do, whether that's more courses, more free things. I have a whole list of ideas, just have to execute on them. Uh, one thing that I see work for a lot of people is going live. I haven't figured out exactly what I would do going live yet. I have some ideas for that too, but I, I hope to incorporate that sooner than later. Finding the right subscription offers is another thing. I just, I don't know what perks and what things I could offer that y'all would want exactly. So please let me know. I have some ideas, but if you have any thoughts, please let me know. But that's something I, I think could be beneficial in the future, especially as, as I start to create more short film type things that could be it could be cool for me a stricter consistent schedule like i said i've never been the best at that i've over the past three years actually posted a shit ton of videos throughout the year but it's never like i'm gonna do one a week um every single week i've just i always i'll miss a week here and there when my business gets too busy i just can't keep up with it so that's something i'm trying to find a, a better balance with analyzing analytics I'm very shitty at that. I'm not going to lie either. And that's something I really want to improve on because I think it can help you make better videos and see when people are falling off and see what's working and what's not working. So that is 100% something I have to do better on. And lastly, I know this is really long. Um, I want to experiment more at a higher quality. So I'm going to be trying some different types of videos just at a higher quality and see if any of those work. What will they be? I can't tell you. Anyways, I hope this helps. If it did, please leave a comment. Let me know. Thank you for tuning in. Um, if you want some merch or presets or anything, check them out. It helps the channel. Use any of those affiliate links for TubeBuddy. It also helps the channel. Um, a lot more is coming. I'm very dedicated to growing this thing, so let's keep it going. Hi there. Thanks for watching. If you really liked it, maybe you'll like some of these too. While you decide, here's some music. Enjoy!